Welcome to our Bite Size PD today. Today we're talking about um, how to be wiser in your math instruction. So let me get this. So a lot of the information we're going to talk about today comes from the language handbook. So if you can locate that, that will be helpful for you. The great thing in math is we already have a resource for increasing or being more wise in our math instruction. So I'm gonna go through a few things here. So we are recording our professional de development norms. And as we're working through today, our multi-systems, a multi-tiered system of supports will really be focusing on this scaffold instruction and grouping. And then we will touch briefly on the systematic vocabulary routine. So our learning intention today is, today I'm learning specific wiser strategies and scaffolds that I can add to my math instruction so I can increase the amount of speaking that's happening in my classroom. And I use the term speaking because that is linked to the wiser learning but that would be the mathematical discourse that needs to take place. You'll know you're successful if you can choose one of the strategies or scaffolds to start using tomorrow in your math instruction. You can also tell a colleague why the strategy is important for your students. And as a reminder, our, on our district day, we did um, talk about wiser, where we should be working wiser and not harder. So the power of wiser, it provides, and this is review, scaffolding for grade appropriate assignments, which is critical. It supports stronger instruction, deeper engagement, and higher expectations. That rigor should be for all students, not just the students who you may classify as high. All students need rigor, which result in making student thinking visible and having greater access to content through language. So as we work through our professional learning today, we are going to specifically spoke, focus on the triangle of speaking and listening and specifically speaking. So if we can coral read this together, speaking and listening are essential for students to build understanding and exchange ideas, information and opinions through collaboration and engagement. So as you know, this is essential for, excuse me, let's go back. This is essential for all, but it is critical for some. We cannot not use the wiser strategies and support for our students to really support their understanding. So if we look into the language support handbook, it has the language modalities. It has reading, listening, writing, speaking, and then also representing. So they're very closely aligned. And I think you'll be able to make the matches with Wiser as you're using, working with the language support handbook. But today we're going to specifically look at the speaking in mathematics. Because when we, um, a strong instructional classroom that is going to be affecting has a lot of student discourse. So we should provide many opportunities for all students to speak. We should encourage multi-sensory communication where students use objects, drawing gestures, and, and support oral communication. We also should have students do oral communication activities. It shouldn't just be a sit and get or students speaking. And this page in your book is found on this. Speaking in math is on page 17 in your language handbook, which you cannot see, but page 17. So when we think about this, what is going on in your classroom? What opportunities do you see for speaking in the math classroom? What are you giving your students? What are you seeing as a coach to provide those opportunities for speaking? I have to give a disclaimer here because I think some people think this language handbook is just a support for multilingual students. It is not. This language support is for all students and all because all students are learning the language of math. So don't think because oh, I only have one or two EL or multilinguals in my classroom. This is for all students because we're all learning the language of math. And I want to go from there into my instructional guide and talk about the scaffolding piece in there. So one thing I can't leave before we say is this piece right here where it says instructional planning is key, intentional planning is key. You can't expect to use have good scaffolds and use instructional, wiser instructional pieces if you don't plan for them. So if you go into the scaffolds that are mentioned in the map, you'll notice the sentence frame is one of the big ones and it has support for the speaking and listening, which we're focusing on today. So I wanna just look at this speaking and listening strategy. And I pulled out the little box, but I want to read this first sentence with you. Provide opportunities for students to use 
key vocabulary while providing a structure that may be higher than what you could they could produce on their own. It is so critical that you use sentence frames for all students. I know when I am at a professional learning or trying to think of something to write, if I had that little starting component that gets me going, I can produce a lot better um, talk and writing for sure. So going back to the language support handbook, the great thing is, like I said, the language support handbook already has the speaking components written in there. So I'm just going into a, this is the grade one language support handbook. And this is lesson, each topic has lesson support for every single lesson. So if you just look at topic four, I just pull this one out. This is lesson 4-1. They don't all have sentence frames, but this one has three different sentence frames just in this or two, I guess. So for the convince me component in 4-1, it says help students answer the question by providing these sentence starters. So we can have students using speaking and using the language by use, providing these sentence starters. And that will get a lot more language and a lot higher quality language by using them. So within every single topic, every lesson has language supports that you can use just specifically for that lesson. And the great thing is a lot of them you'll see over and over, like there are quite a few sentence frames. Gestures is another uh, scaffold to become what for wiser instruction in math. And these are built in for you. Let's look at one in um, just going into this instructional pieces in the TE. So this is lesson 2-2 from a third grade Envision. And if you look at this on the right-hand side, every single lesson has a language modality component. It does say English language learns, but going back, we're, all of our students are learning the language of math. So this specifically touches on speaking. It will be one of the four modalities, speaking, listening, writing, or reading. And it talks about how to draw circles on the board, and then it gives you language that you would use for students to use do more speaking in your classroom. So we have the language support handbook that supports language, and then we have the Envision 2020, the teacher edition, always gives an idea of one of the four modalities to use in your classroom, because all students are learning language of math. So if we think about sentence frames, in speaking and listening, why do we use them? Once again, they provide many speaking opportunities for all students because there are going to be students that need support in that beginning. There are students who may be learning the language of math and it gives you the opportunity to use that, support students to use that precise key language. If you know fraction is a vocabulary word that we talked about, that is going to be part of my sentence frame so the students can use that good language. We also need to write and model the key spoken words during the class discussion. Maybe I have a word bank and I have students, when I hear the word unit fraction, I'm going to tell every time I hear students use that because I want the students to know it's important. I'm going to use it as a teacher and it'll be part of my word bank. And I think it's very critical. I was talking to a teacher and she said, I didn't realize this, uh, the the positive outcomes my students were going to have from me using key language. So my students scored about 30% higher than my colleagues. And they said, what are you doing? And, I, and she said, I attribute it to you, me using the rich language in the math classroom. So instead of saying that, okay, the answer is, you would may use words like some or the product is, the difference is the quotient because we want students knowing that goes way beyond just answer. And we would use subtract instead of take away. Takeaway is not a term that, um, that, that's not what subtraction is. We would use the word, word subtraction or difference rather than takeaway. If you're doing the commutative property, if you notice a commutative property in a problem the students are doing or some instruction, address that as this is the commutative property. Let's use the commutative property. So use rich math language. If you're using it and you expect your students to use it, that is going to increase the speaking in your classroom and the, the conceptual understanding. The teacher ex needs to expect complete sentences in discussion and oral answers. If I were to say, Joey, how did you get, um, or what is the answer to this, this subtraction problem? We would expect the students to say, the, subtract the answer to the subtraction problem is. So don't let students get away with one word answer. They need to be speaking and using complete sentences in your classroom. One last plug um, is to use a systematic vocabulary routine. If you're using this to teach your, it's not just something to do in ELA, but this is something you need to use in the all, as you teach the systematic language of math. 
So this gives you an example of polygon. The word is polygon. What's the word? The students would say polygon. If you have the students say that word so many times, your learners will be able to say that because they've heard it, they've seen it, they've they've had a lot of interaction. So that you need to be using the systematic vocabulary routine to have the students learn the vocabulary. They'll speak the word tons of times. They'll see it broken down. They'll see examples, not examples, visuals. And then they really have a good, a good conceptual understanding of that word. And then they can use it with their peers. So remember, this is essential for all, but it is critical for some. Those students that may not have the language and the vocabulary, these couple of strategies using sentence frames, using the systematic vocabulary routine, those two pieces alone can really, and having teachers use rich language in our classroom, those are essential for all, but they're critical for some. So if we go back to our learning intention for today, our learning intention is to use Today, you're, you learned to use specific wiser strategies or scaffolds that you can add to your math instruction so you can increase the amount of speaking that is happening in your classroom. There should be a lot of oral language going on with that rich math words and using precise language. You will know you're successful when you can choose at least one strategy or scaffold that we mentioned today, whether it's increasing the, the making my students do complete sentences or providing more sentence frames. Whatever you learned from today, if you can use one tomorrow and be able to tell your colleague why that strategy or scaffold is so important for your students. I hope that helped. Remember, I'm always here to support you. You can just email me at sallyandwakely.canyoncitric.org. Have a great day. Thank you.